Okay, Vasundra, can you check if you can see it on the kidney page as well? I'm just checking whether we've done the live stream and I'm just checking if we can see it on all the pages. So it's, is it on the Kidney Warriors page? Just looking, just give me a minute. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Good to go. Is it on the Kidney Warriors page? Okay, all right. We need to stop that other one so that there's no echo. <laughs> okay, so... Um, Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Uh, we are here today is World Kidney Day. And, uh, you know, as part of our observation of World Kidney Day, we are going to talk about uh, a topic which hardly gets talked about. Um, the theme is living better with kidney disease, but it also acknowledges the impact on families and family caregivers. Um, and it is our privilege to bring together a very interesting panel. Uh, I sh most of you know the panelists, but I will introduce them in a short while. Uh, but let me first quickly introduce Patients Engage. As some of you already know, Patients Engage is an online platform uh, operational for uh, over five years, focused on evidence-based and uh, comprehensive management of chronic conditions from the perspective of patients and family caregivers. And you know, we've always believed in the value of lived experiences and how being informed and uh, you know, proactive about your health leads to feeling empowered and leads to better quality of life, leads to better decision making. Um, so we started, I think, about uh, doing uh, kidney related webinars about a year back, uh, again, in partnership with Kidney Warriors. So we had done, uh, living better with kidney disease last year uh, with uh, Shruti, uh, Mukundan, Kamal Shah and Anjali uh, as a caregiver. And then we've done again, uh, you know, how it impacts the siblings with Sunny and Anjali. And as part of that same series, we are very privileged to have with us today, uh, Vasundra Raghavan, who is the uh, CEO of Kidney Warriors Foundation. Uh, we've got uh, Satyendra Rathor, whose son uh, Siddharth also has a kidney uh, disease. And we have uh, Usha Uttup, who really needs no introduction. Uh, but, uh, and you know, most of you know that her son, Sunny, uh, also has a kidney issue. Um, and uh, we are calling out both Kidney Warriors Foundation, with whom we've had a long collaboration, as well as Sunny Kidney Foundation on this show. Um, just a advisory to people watching us that the discussion here and the information that is shared is based on the experience of the panelists, not to be taken as medical advice. So please do consult your doctor for specific medical issues. You may get ideas and you may want to, uh, you know, take those discussions back to your doctors, uh, but please do consult them. The session is being recorded, and if you're logged into Zoom, you can post your questions on the Q&A. If you're on Facebook, you can post them on the live feed, and we will pick them up. Um, and again, if you have an experience to share, write into us at editor at patientsengage.com, and you can follow us on our social media channels. Our website is patientsengage.com. Uh, we are on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all of the webinars we do, uh, the recordings go up on YouTube. And if you want easy access to our daily content, then you can download the Android app as well. So let me get started and not waste too much time because I think we have a lot uh, to cover here. Uh, so thank you once again. Satendra, if you can put on your video, it will be great. Uh, appreciate that. Yeah, ma'am, I'm there. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I think before we get into the nitty gritties of the uh, disease management and how it impacted. Can I ask each of you to describe your child in a couple of sentences? You know, what, what did you think of your child before the diagnosis, before the, the identity of the patient took over? So uh, let me start with you, Satyendra, if you can describe your, your son before the diagnosis. 
Uh, so before the diagnosis, I think life was uh, more joyful. He was more at peace uh, with all the normal acti activities he was doing. So, so he was a normal child. I, I was considering him as a normal child, and he was also uh, in the same uh, like playing outside and having a very normal life. So, it life was more peaceful and joyful before the diagnosis. But then uh, the life is tensed after uh, the treatment started. So that is the main difference between the two parts. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Usha ji, how, what did, you know, what do you remember of your son before the diagnosis? Yeah. Okay. First, let me say namaskar, namaskaram, satsrikal, salam alaikum to everybody who's on the panel and everybody else who's watching the live stream. Um, when you say, what did I uh, think of my son before uh, this was diagnosed? I would say the very name, Sonny, is uh, what he was and what he is. And, uh, you know, Sonny has always been such an outdoor person, such a people's person and such a person full of life. I mean, you know, just uh, raring to go and uh, the life of every party and uh, every other mother and every other sister and every other person thought that he was just the gem of the party and the life of the party, though he was different with me. <laughs> I guess all sons are like that. And um, I remember uh, very, very clearly the one thing that has stayed in my mind as far as Sunny is concerned is the name Sunny. He was really, really full of uh, life and full of uh, fun and uh, shall I say full of spirits, real spirit to could be a go-getter. I mean, you know, really right. happy. And also a very, very soft and gentle person deep within. Right. Very soft. He wouldn't harm a flea. Mm. Not a mm. chance. And he still remains like that. Uh, right. I've been a very proud mother before. And I'm uh, even prouder mother today because uh, he is truly my hero. Mm. And uh, yeah, I feel... Um, Yes, you know, different from uh, what uh, Satyendra said, that, uh, you know, life was different then. Of course, it was different. Right. Of course, life was different then. But uh, I find you uh, look into different facets of life now. And uh, yeah, Sunny is Sunny. Right, right, right. Vasundra. <laughs> um, uh, Aditya was... Uh... He still is a very uh, people's person mm. and uh, he was very fond of cooking and he was uh, <laughs> wanting to join the uh, catering institute. Right. And uh, of course, <coughs> as soon as the uh, kidney was knocked at his door, we <laughs> parents pushed him into education. Mm. He did his PhD and uh, he did his postdoctorate. And now he's gone back into cooking. Right. Passion. Right. Good, good. It's, it's wonderful when they actually, you know, kind of find their way back into their areas of passion, right? So, That's really crazy, you know, because even Sunny, uh, he loves watching MasterChef. Right. And he's, uh, he really loves, uh, not that he's ever uh, gone into the kitchen to really do something like probably Vasudra's son, but, you, you know, he is very, very fond of uh, cooking. Yeah, I, I just realized that because every day that I go into his room mm. uh, three or four times in a day, I notice that he's uh, always watching MasterChef. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Besides the golf and, uh, you know, the tennis and cricket that he's always watching right. and football. Right. So he's the, he's the couch chef, as I call my husband as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes, really couch chef. Uh, um, Satyendra, if you can kind of come back on and stay. Um, so how old was your son when he was initially diagnosed and what were the early symptoms, uh, etc.? If you can just, uh, you know, very quickly tell us that. Yeah, so uh, like in the age of nine years, he was diagnosed uh, with the CKD5 stage. And uh, definitely after that, the treatment started. But uh, I think the early symptoms were, of course, uh, the UTI and uh, were the, the key symptom which was there and he got the treatment for that also. But <laughs> then the in, in the ninth year, I think that the, the, it was the fifth stage which was diagnosed and then the treatment started. 
right right um and uh, did you have any you know symptoms that you um should have watched out for or you know what were the just so that people who are watching are aware you know what i know you said i think uh, that he suddenly became very weak uh, were there any other symptoms that uh, we all picked up on yeah so for me i think uh, the foam with the urine is one and second is of course the weakness part and loss of appetite is there right so, uh, and i think the weakness is very very much visible in the ckd patient right so these are the three key symptoms which we observed so uh, okay and um, um vasundra uh, with your son how 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 old was he and what were the initial symptoms he was 15 years and when he was 10 years we had gone to a urologist he was supposed to be the senior most an experienced person so we went to him very embarrassed that he was bed wetting and we said this has to be solved because aditya was finding it very difficult to go and uh, spend night you know have this uh, night over uh, with mm-hmm. cousins and friends earlier it was not a problem he would he would be very confident about taking all his sheets and going right but uh, it, there was a stage when he felt that no i can't do that any longer mm. and when we went to them uh, to the urologist he just suggested a circumcision mm. and uh, he said uh, he will uh, outgrow this uh, wait for 4 5 years and by the time we waited for that 4 5 years to pass his kidney had uh, failed so, uh, so that came out uh, as a shock because you know we were very educated in my family we had uh, all of them were the men were all engineers right uh, one we had a um, mba uh, we had a um, doctorate in physics mm. and we had um, one uh, son in law who was uh, who had done his mba in indiana university so it was like a very educated family and then suddenly this how come that you know like no one uh, understood that this some relation is there between bedwetting and uh, kidney correct disease. correct correct so we were very foxed and and, uh, and in subsequently your um, you know kind of uh, work that you do and the research you did did you find that is a common uh, i started research immediately right and uh, then i found out national kidney foundation had this that well it is one of the rarest mm. like 2% of the bedwetting children end up with ESRD. So, right. you know, like he was like one of the fortunate people who <laughs> he reached there. He's the end post. But uh, mm. uh, it was uh, something. And I was working right then. I started my work on the book Shades of Life. Right. And, uh, I was always uh, with this kidney disease stuff. Right. Right. Um. Usha ji, in your case, um, Sunny was older, right? Uh, yes, forty-two. I think forty-two, 42 yeah. when he was diagnosed. And uh, <coughs> actually, the for me, the whole thing is a complete shock, complete mm. shock and surprise and inadequacy, as far as I'm concerned. And um, she said that. like she said everybody was educated and all that we, we we are all educated i mean i i was fairly educated but you, one notices or one realizes how badly uh, neglected was my education or uh, how selectively did i get badly <laughs> you know educated who shall i say because uh, there are some things which you don't want to accept or you don't right. want to think think of so right through you think that oh your children are fine and you know you're fine and everything is going off well and everything's good at the utuk farm you yeah. know so that that's your your uh, final line every day and you thank god and you've got your prayers going and you you your gratitude is there everything is intact Right. and then when this suddenly hits you like a bolt from the blue and you know there was no there were no symptoms that we mm. knew of you see i think because uh, he was a much uh, much older than the other two so you know we uh, i didn't as a mother i didn't really uh, notice these kind of things you know like bed wetting or having to you know mm. go to the toilet too many times in a night and nothing none of that but the one thing that i did which i told you about the other day which i did find 
mind that his face was becoming darker. Right. And right. then, uh, of course, and he's a fair boy. He's a fair lad. And so when uh, I told, I used to tell Sunny often, you know, the, why are you looking so dark? And then he'd say, Amma, you've got your color conscious. And, you know, mm. he'd just make fun of it and leave it at that. So, okay, I also left it at that. But the day that he told me that, uh, you know, his, uh, well, it was a company package deal, which they had right. to have every the annual month, and every year, yeah. in which uh, the previous year in July, he uh, uh, knew that he was, uh, it was creatinine was one. Oh, let me tell you, I didn't even know what was creatinine. And that's mm. really bad news as far as uh, if you call yourself educated and and you don't know what is creatinine. I mean, there's something wrong with you somewhere. You know, it's ridiculous because we all had our blood tests or whatever it is and didn't even bother to look at it. Because the main thing was you looked at hemoglobin and then you looked at sugar and then... And later, you look at later, whatever is marked red, right? Yes. So you only you, look at... No, it. and you look... No, you look for, I'm saying. Mm, Say, mm. for example, you've got a, a bad throat or something like that and you want to get... So you take, do a blood test. You're looking for eosinophilia or whatever rubbish right, thing right. they're thinking of. Right. Okay. And... Uh, hemoglobin and then you think of uh, what shall I say triglycerides later on in life wondering what is cholesterol or something like that okay so one I never looked at this mm. never ever so uh, in July the previous year he uh, his creatinine was uh, 0. 0.0 or something or 0. 0.1 whatever and uh, the next year when he was diagnosed it was 8.60 right and uh, that came as a rude shock to me when he told me, he just walked into the room and he said, I was wondering why he was coming back late from work. And, you know, mm. he said he was going for this uh, blood test or whatever. And then he came into the room and I will never forget that uh, moment. I, I was sat in my blue chair looking at the uh, television and he walked in and he said, uh, Amma, I've got some bad news for you. I said, what? Mm. And he said, uh, my creatinine is uh, 8.60. And uh, I said, and so what about that? And he said, um, my doctor has suggested that I straight away get, get into dialysis. And my first shock or first reaction was that of anger. And I'm not an angry person, okay? I think when I look back now, I think the anger came out of the fact that I was so inadequate. Mm. that I couldn't realize what he was talking about. So I was angry. And uh, I said, what do you mean dialysis? Yes, it, you, he said, yes, you've got to have dialysis. And I said, maybe this blood test is wrong. Let me go to Subir Tatto, who was our family person. He said, okay. So I rang up Subir and he said, in the meantime, I tried to get through to Anjali, my daughter, and find out from her. Because they have, uh, my son-in-law has contacts in coaching and all that so we just wanted to get an opinion so in the meantime I rang up uh, Dr. Subir Datta and he said 8.60 is very high so you know we'll do I said but I he said I can't he the doctor himself said I can't believe it because uh, he said in Bengali, Bengali. He said, yeah that Ato bhalo mani shori run, run and this and that and it, it can't can't be. So, okay, we'll get another blood test done. So, we did the blood test again the next morning and it had jumped up to nine something. Right, right. So, that was crazy, actually. I didn't figure out. And then we finally got through to uh, my daughter and uh, that night itself. And uh, my daughter said, okay, we spoke, spoke to my son-in-law. And he said, okay, I'll speak to Dr. Nenon, who is the uh, nephrologist in coaching. He's my... Right uncle or whatever and then then from then on it carried on so you right. wanted my first reaction was towards myself I saw no symptoms in Sunny and mm -hmm. none which which I could understand right. you see because I think when your child is much younger you notice all these things and you discuss with your spouse or whatever Correct. Whereas Correct. I, uh, I remember that Jani was not, uh, my husband was not in go in Calcutta, mm. though Jani also feels that he kept saying that he was, uh, he was looking dark. Mm. Mm. Okay, but I don't know if that was a, a symptom enough to to uh, warrant, for, uh, yeah, yeah, further investigation. Mm. Right, right. Um, and then after the diagnosis, I think. Uh, 
you'll all, I mean, their sons all went through transplant, right? So, um, Vasundra, you want to, was it easy to figure out the transplant process? Um, uh, um, and actually, it took- You were not in India, right, that time? We were in India. Oh, you were in India, right, sorry. Uh, we had, uh, actually, we had to take a few opinions to mm. find out whether mm -hmm. what doctors uh, said is true. Though Dr. Gandhi is supposed to be very renowned, but we went and we also told Dr. Gandhi we took a second opinion. Excuse but, me, uh, Basundraji. Just tell me where are you at the moment, or where were you in Bombay? Or now I'm in back in Bombay, returned uh -huh. from Dubai. Okay. We went to Dubai basically because we lost all our savings <laughs> mm. on all these treatments that we had. Uh, so, so we took a second. So she was in Bombay that time as well. Yeah, mm, right. Okay. So, so then we uh, we took a second opinion and third opinion, and one doctor said, "Let's do a transplant now." So Aditya said, "No, I want I want to go to Doctor Gandhi. I won't do any transplant." And how this. old was your son? I'm sorry, I didn't. Fifteen know. and a half. Fifteen and a half. But he had a mind of his own. He was like. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I was more shocked than he was. He was shocked. Actually, I never found out from him that what did you feel about mm. the failure? Because that was the, that was one dialogue I never had when he was. I was also trying to uh, surface my own emotions, trying to understand what to do. My husband was not in town, so I had to take a decision on my own. Correct. <laughs> Just had to find out what's happening around us. Right, right. Um, and for you, Satendra, did you all have any challenges with, uh, you know, the transplant decision? No, I think it's a very, it's a very big shift from a normal situation to a kidney failure uh, situation. Mm. So it's, it's a big, big shift, which, right. which no other issue, like even a heart issue or, or some other disease can take, because they take some time to, you know, diagnosis and then treatment. But here it's a very fast shift we have to so i think good doctors is, is, is advice is a must which Basu ma'am was just uh, telling us and even um, the the, the, the ma'am just told us that the, the advice from the right set of doctors is very important in the, in the identification of good hospital and right. i think immediate immediate transplant is the uh, best solution in this case because because that actually breaks the, uh, the the all the the pain you are going through and and, and, and the relief is there to the patient also right so, who, who, who all, all are uh, there in the uh, this session, I think it is very important for, to go for a transplant, uh, no, not wasting time. And, and, and Satyendraji, you are also in Bombay? I'm in Chandigarh, ma'am. Chandigarh, okay. So I, I was in Chandigarh only that point of time. And uh, since Siddharth was very young and he had some UTI issues, so we took him to a normal doctor. And uh, so, so I think here a word of caution is that all children should be should have a medical test every year, which we don't go for. And only after a certain age, uh, the kids go for the medical checkup. And that is the, uh, the, the I think, not the right way of uh, yeah, of treating the child. So I think that medical treatment should be at age of five and at age of 10, we should get them checked uh, by, by in a good hospital. So so we were going to the normal hospital, normal doctor who was giving him all the vaccinations and all that. So he was treating him. And I think uh, in a normal family, people don't uh, go so far and they think Ki, this can happen to a child. Their yeah. child when, when everybody in the family is all normal. normal. Even in my generation, nobody faced this type of uh, tragedy. So, so, so we never thought of that and uh, it, it, it was a shock for us. So definitely uh, because uh, people like me who are working in some organization, companies come for support. But in other cases, when uh, the, 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 the parents or the uh, the, the child don't get support, then it's a uh, bigger issue. So, so I think de definitely, uh, so, so there are th five, four, uh, four uh, points which should be noted down here is one is good, good uh, hospital should be there uh, to, to, to get the treatment first. We should not go to a normal one because then, because PGI is here in Chandigarh. So we, we got this opportunity to treat him and, you know, get, got him admitted immediately to PGI. So, so I think right advice was given and immediately we moved for a transplant decision, which otherwise would have de been delayed if uh, we would have not been advised well by a panel of doctors. So uh, immediate, without wasting time in, uh, in dialysis, we should go for transplant. Yeah. Right. 
um i guess that's uh, again one of those things that you know each family has to figure out what works best and you know their finances etc as well is a mm-hmm. challenge so um, but it's so strange you know that at that moment i mean when uh, he sunny decided to move to cochin uh, actually vasundra uh, ji and satendra i live in uh, calcutta and uh, we have a home in calcutta sunny myself and my husband my daughter is married in cochin and so uh, for some reason not some reason i mean he i think he felt it was better that we both go there than all five of them come from there to go to calcutta mm. and he somehow felt that the support of his sister would be better mm. okay so uh, i mean the decision was taken and on the 4th of july we left we this was all discovered on the 1st 4th we left for kerala and dr nanan said on the way from the airport to the hospital or to your home you come to his ho- hospital first mm. so we went to his hospital and he checked him up and he said he should get admitted immediately mm. and start dialysis because he will need uh, a transplant right so immediately we went to the uh, to lake shore in uh, mm. cochin in nanakla and uh, yeah we got him admitted and uh, you know it's so strange at that uh, time uh, one really doesn't think of uh, i mean thank god for that but i really didn't think of the money and you know how such an expensive disease this is really mm-hmm. as everybody would know and uh, we went in for the dialysis and then he he had this uh, catheter put in the neck first because they couldn't find a vein so then uh, he was going through dialysis on that and he was perfectly normal perfectly he just uh, was perfect i i think i was the one who was most uh, affected by all that and though i never showed it to him i tried behaving as normally as i could and uh, i still do i mean the only time when i uh, i mean i cry almost every day and i uh, encourage people to cry because it's mm. not always it's it's a good thing actually to let it out and also it uh, it's cathartic you know it's a Correct. catharsis to be able to cry and uh, but i will never get into his room and with a sad face never mm. it's always with a happy face and he is always uh he's always a bright child you know there's no no question about it but when we heard about the fact that he has to do his transplant mm. then it became i don't know i mean it seemed to seems uh, by their conversation that was slightly easier for them but we realized that you can't just get a transplant done anywhere in in india just like that right. but in kerala it's legal and you there are ways of doing it and uh, legally and so we went the straight path mm. we uh, tried to do it legally and uh, we waited and all this uh, horrible words and you know you want to uh, actually i am quite an escape not an escape is what shall i say when uh, uh, satyendra said that you know everybody should have a medical check up i'm scared even uh, even to just go to the doctor for anything i mm. rather not okay i know that's a wrong attitude but though i would encourage my children to do it i would probably encourage everybody else to do it but for myself it's just a no no i just feel that as long as i'm feeling okay and all there's no need to go to a doctor you know you know what i mean that yeah. why it because i'm always thinking that if i go in for go and look for something you know I'll, the doctor will find 300 other things and i don't want to do 300 other things <laughs> i really don't <laughs> <laughs> on the lighter side or on the darker side really right, right. <laughs> but when we realized what all what all it entailed to get the transplant done oh let me tell you about my husband's reaction that was mm-hmm. really funny that was really funny when i spoke to him from calcutta and i told him you know sunny's been uh, diagnosed with this and so we'd be coming he said oh that's no problem actually you can just uh, you know it or with medication it will all go mm. so little we know we know so little right and, right uh, you know like pasundra ji said she did a lot of research 
but I was not I'm, I was not tech savvy at that time and even now though I am I there are very few things like uh, this wretched vaccination or COVID or I don't go into the nitty gritty because I know I can't handle it mm. and it's not I, it's I'm not able to do much with that knowledge okay right. sometimes I feel uh, little knowledge is not good right. you know it just um, just makes you think of it but there are times when during his dialysis and coaching where I had an offer I mean I was supposed to go to England and then they told me to Anjali told me to get him snacks without with less salt and you know right, all right. things. yeah and uh, <laughs> there was so so many little little things coming out of that that when I I thought about the transplant and when they said you have to either get a, a donor or you have to wait for a that word cadaver. is cadaver. cadaver. Yes. Ugh, you see them in, <laughs> too many. I think I read too many Robin Cook books in my younger days, and I shouldn't have really because it didn't <laughs> do me much good. And uh, then, yeah, then we found the donor, and uh, we did everything according to uh, right, right, properly right. done. But it was a process, and mm. it, uh, we followed the process. The process, and that's right. another thing which Sunny is very, uh, very, very. Uh, Oh, tied up particular about yeah, particular that I about. shouldn't uh, that he shouldn't you know people shouldn't think that oh she's a celebrity he wants to go but I said look I've worked hard enough yes. what is wrong if somebody is giving me uh, a, a little bit of an advantage like if you have to go instead of standing in the you know in the line so long to get a bill process or something what is there? I mean, why? But he would never want me to do that. He would always mm. want Anjali to go. And But, in uh, you know, there's no need to feel like that. I just kept feeling, I still feel that way. Right. That I've worked, God knows I've worked hard enough to get that recognition. Or why shouldn't I use it? But mm. no, not with Sunny. It mm. is just, we just had to go the straight way. So right. when we got the donor, then we had the transplant. Now you want to go to the next uh, Yes. Step and go ahead. <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I think that I'll come back to you, Asundra. Um, I think both uh, Sunny and Aditya had went through a rejection of the transplant. Um, how did that, you know, how was that process for Sundra? And how, you know, what were your reactions to it? Because you, you think fundamentally that, okay, we've fixed the problem, right? In a sense, we've got a transplant things will be better now and then tell us walk us through that uh, you know that uh, the... also. so after he was detected we uh, we had time he was still not star ready for the dialysis so we went searching and i got myself tested and i was approved by dr gandhi and two days later i was detected two or three days later i felt a lump in my mm. breast and I was detected with a breast cancer. So that put us into one big spot because, you know, suddenly there was a donor and this year old said, oh, my donor is not there. And uh, he was in the class 10. He was studying for his uh, ICSC board and all this drama was happening. And I thought probably he will not win pass the exam, but he uh, scored very good percentage and he got into KC and Jai Hind, uh, uh, what is that, Sin Xavier's, then he went to I. Right. all that happened. But in the meantime, after I got myself cured of my breast cancer, I was able to donate. And I had to put up a strong fight to donate because the doctor was not very easy to agree to that donation. Right. And uh, all this time he was on dialysis? He started dialysis. When I went into my treatment, breast cancer treatment, he started his dialysis. And uh, so, so it was very, that one, that period was very tough for us from 96 to 99. We had to uh, get so many treatments done and so much of mm. expenditure. All our savings were utilized. We didn't have uh, insurance. And it's also, it's also extremely stressful, right? Cancer treatment itself is intense. Yeah. In terms of, you know, the care required, the yeah, chemotherapies. I, I went into, I went, I finished my thing, came out. I would go to work because the office said uh, that, you know, if you don't come to work, you know, we may have to change, uh, fi find someone else. And I was very keen that I should be earning for the transplant. Mm. 
running back to work, going in for the chemotherapy, uh, and then coming back the, after one day's rest, I would go back to work. So all this drama I did, finally, I was able to donate. Right. Then, uh, after six years, he lost his kidney when he was doing his PhD in LA. He had uh, taken some uh, over-the-counter medication, mm. and uh, which was, uh, you know, at that time, it was um, Christmas time, so the doctors were not there in your LA. So he just thought it was cold and he just had some medications. Right. And, uh, right. The result was so fast. Uh, by, by 1st of uh, January, I got a call saying that he has lost his kidney and I had to rush from India to LA. Mm. And then the, the, the going back, you know, the, the rejection is something that I think I didn't accept it. Aditya could have accepted it because he knew that his body could tell him. Right. I would ask the doctor very naively that, oh, will it come back? What do you think? So they did the plasma, uh, plasma phoresis. They did the solumetrol. They gave all the anti-rejection medication. And then we, uh, then he had finished one month of dialysis. And I'm still thinking that there'll be some way the kidney will just kick up and we will be very happy again. Mm. We were uh, rock bottom where funds were. My husband was uh, had shifted to Dubai so that he can earn for, earn for the family. One elder son had gone to LA for his uh, master's. Right. So, you know, it was just like sending people and doing all this uh, rigmarole. And when he lost his kidney, the only thing that... I, he just suddenly woke up one morning and he said, Ma, I'm so sorry I lost your kidney. I said, oh, I'm not worried about my kidney. I'm worried that you don't, you have to go back to dialysis. Mm. Doing a PhD and going back to dialysis in LA was so tough. And I was living in the bachelor pad, four or five guys. I was cooking them nice meal. They were happy. But then I was sitting alone and I'm feeling so sad about his situation. that Suddenly all of them were enjoying life. And you know, when you see them in that. Correct. That phase of life, right? You know, if you're at home. You're only in your own home, so you don't see the other right. But as I was cooking for them, the other kids were so good. They were mm. so cooperative. Right. He enjoyed his uh, LA life with dialysis, with peritoneal dialysis. He would go to uh, Yosemite Park. They'll drive mm. into the forest. They'll camp there. And he'll do his peri peritoneal dialysis. It was fun for him, but it was a lot of uh, stress because... I was sitting in Dubai and worrying about him. Then I would right. be running. Every four months, I'd be there. And another six months, I would come here, then go back. So it right. was, life was between the two. Right. And, and right. my son, when I got cancer, the elder son said that I'll donate my kidney. Mm. If you got cancer, I don't want you to go through this. Let me donate it. But uh, I didn't want, because the age group was eight, and the age was only a year and a half. So now, the second time around, we could get his kidney. Mm. Injection is the tough one for the patient handling. The caregiver never talks about it, but it's it's that one thing that is there's so much of regret that you have to go through that. Today, because he's had a transplant, I'm smiling a little, but then Correct. that phase was the toughest phase in life. Right. Well, right. You almost lost it's losing a kidney is almost like losing losing someone very close to you in the family so that is a that is a depression or a, that you know you get very sad the whole family mm. become, you know we were all very sad that he went back to dialysis but aditya being cheerful as he was he was enjoying himself you're going to yosemite doing this that but i think i as a mother i I was not so happy. I was still very sad that right. go back to dialysis. Right, right. Um, I know when we spoke, Ushaji, to uh, Sunny and Anjali in one of the previous webinars, uh, I think in Sunny's case, there were enough signs that the, the body was not, uh, you know, kind of uh, accepting the transplanted kidney, right? Uh, so were you kind of more prepared for the transplant to finally fail and to for him to go back to the 
go back to dialysis no actually i didn't even realize that i knew that there was something wrong mm. but uh, it was anjali who really shook me into reality and said amma you know that it's being rejected it's been scarred the mm. kidney is getting scarred every time and uh, yeah we and we finally knew that it was rejected he got back uh, on to dialysis and uh, like uh, vasundra ji just said i mean you know she really brought tears to my eyes which she said as a mother you really um, the child is uh, he's able to accept it better than you are you know and that is so true and i really thank god for my music that i you know i was able to divert my mind to so many other things like uh, uh yes but i think the sadness uh, lives with you the whole the whole time because you're thinking every day mm. every day you know because uh, sunny is going through dialysis and uh, he's very happy he does want to go to through another transplant so far right right so and uh, he gets uh, more and more energized when he knows that there are so many people who have done it for 20 years and doing very well and they're happy and you know so uh, but when we moved i mean when we did the whole thing in the house i mean you know he wanted to instead of going to the hospital every day and uh, he's not able to take the four hour thing you know mm. so he takes only two hours which means he has to do it for six days definitely in the week so the the house and then, and then with this corona wretched thing okay. you know oh i don't know how vasundhara ji is like a real soldier it's amazing how she's been able to go through the whole thing and um, i'm really really uh, wondering whether it's uh, i'm really not so good at, as a panelist i think because i get too emotionally involved you know what i mean and um i think it's uh, when i used to see him i remember when we even went to uh, the vatican okay we went together sunny and myself mm. and uh, you know it was some of the happiest times that we spent together but uh, after the transplant then when he said about oh, when i got to know this thing about the moon face that mm. how with the steroids, steroids. and even now on my cupboard at any time you'll find all the hajar medicines that he had to take you know silica this that and the other well all sorts of things well i take also but uh, somehow i mean you know that seems so so terrifying actually but actually he's he's happy mm. this corona times is just uh, Uh, made it a little bit more scary because uh, there's this technician who has to come in every day right right and uh, he's okay but i mean you yeah. know so we've kept a room specially for him and how we're managing is uh, we have uh, uh, sanitized clothes for him to wear right. so he right. comes in and so the dialysis but i don't know whether sunny is uh, really he's not uh, he's not keen to have a, another transplant at the moment Mm. so i really don't know if there are so many opinions which would matter because i think uh, they take their own decisions you know absolutely absolutely yeah. and right. so it doesn't make any sense for us to say why don't you maybe once in 3 4 months or something i'd say have you thought of anything and you know mm. what about that he has he has a friend called lian obviously right uh, the tennis player tennis and player. Uh, they were talking about something called the bionic chip or something mm-hmm. like that so i don't know when that's ever going to come or if it's going to come at all but um, yeah he's not um, in the mood for a not right. a transplant right right uh, satyendra let us get you back on um, you also talk of and especially because you have a you know young child at the moment uh, and um, you know how did how do you feel as a family in terms of your social interactions right um uh, do you feel uh, that uh, you have to cut off a lot of the engagements that you used to have earlier do you feel isolated as a family or do you you know uh, how do you handle that yeah so um, of course uh, there's a difference between earlier and 
this time that mm-hmm. the social interaction are not uh, not much now because uh, looking at the uh, when siddharth is restricted uh, for uh, eating outside in in public mm-hmm. gathering we also uh, we don't go much out mm-hmm. so that we only visit the hygienic place and of course so we miss uh, family functions at times because travel restrictions are there for for the kid and of course many times uh, we avoid the social gathering because uh, then the kid is not going and we go outside so he he feel uh, awkward that why he is not going so right but but definitely uh, uh, with the growing age uh, he need to interact more and we we, we have to unlearn ourselves and get into the new new method of getting him outside and making him more interactive in family functions also so that people understand his problem because mm. this is this this type of problem normally people don't understand only we understand our kids problem mm. so definitely logo ko samjhana bada mushkil hai ki what phase we are going going okay. mm. Mm. so so that is a very difficult part for a mother <clears throat> his mother and for me yeah really I would like really? to interject here. Hmm. Uh, um, Satyendra, my younger brother was Down syndrome, and we called him Boss because my father started the or uh, uh, business and he didn't have a boss, so he called him Boss. But this child was taken everywhere. We went anywhere. We didn't allow. We didn't worry whether the outsiders thought anything about him. uh we we said okay let us go out we are going out for lunch we are going out for dinner we would take him anywhere to kaiba overoy anywhere and we didn't bother so you know we we must not worry about what the world will think about the child and uh, if it's a hygienic place and you can take him that social interaction is important for for you for your wife for the child suddenly cutting off will not be good right Yes, ma'am. That's all. Same thing that Very I important. don't like to go socializing. I don't like to go for a wedding because kid, I have nothing to talk. I'll be talking about kidney disease. It doesn't matter to them. But uh, you are still young, so you must do it. Yes, that's true. Actually, you know, even for me, it's only now recently after Anjali has become such a amazing, amazing, strong rock. She always was, but you know, starting and working with Kidney Foundation and working with uh, Mumbai Kidney and then Kidney Warriors and then Sunny Foundation, she's become so open about all these things. But you know, it's so funny. Uh, we. Uh, it took some time really to openly talk about it it's mm. so strange i don't know for what reason but we didn't speak much about it but uh, right. yeah but he was uh, uh, you know he i hoped that he wouldn't go out so much at that time but he did he mm. did go out a lot he's a mm. very social human being and you know his social life i think because he's uh, older age than right. satinders yeah right right so you know uh, his social life was totally totally different i have no social life because i'm on the stage all the time and i'm happy with that i'm happy with that so when there is no show i'm very happy being at home and just being a a housewife or being a mother yeah oh but i tell you something the i remember very very well uh, about how everybody handled the you know everyone handles it so differently okay i was staying at the taj in uh, london when i went uh, once when i had a show and it was the first time that i was leaving sunny in cochin and i was going to uh, going for a show abroad it was actually my son sunny and anjali who both said that amma you will become a zombie sitting like this in you know without doing anything so better get back to your singing you know don't mm. do this and so they both colluded son and uh, daughter and saw to it that i started singing again it wasn't a huge gap or anything but still i was refusing everywhere because right. i was torn i was torn between you know being with him wanting going to, to the be show. there right yeah. right so when i went to the taj this was such a fantastic thing i uh, i had only two days okay so i on the first day as soon as i reached i spoke to the concert no i spoke to the receptionist first and i said can you tell me where i can get 
uh, food like you know where there's no sodium or low sodium or this or that or yeah whatever it is snacks for yeah because right. you can get everything ab- abroad Correct. Correct. so uh, she said why don't you ask the concierge so i went and asked the concierge and i said look i'm uh, looking out for something like this can you just draw or you know show me on the tube or show me on by taxi so i went where i was going you know how helpful they are yeah. over there so he took out a map and then he showed me he said this is where you are at the tard next to buckingham palace you have to go by taxi blah 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 he showed me the whole thing and then he said for what are you looking for i mean just tell me for what So I said, "Well, actually, I'm looking uh, out for this," and it took me so long to say it. And I said, "I'm looking out because my son's got a kidney problem," and you know, I was saying it so apologetically. And then that was the day that it, everything changed for me. Not mm-hmm. many people know about it, but I, um, because I've not spoken about it. The person who was the concierge at the concierge, he uh, he said, "You know, then you came to the right place because I'm a kidney patient myself." Wow. Well, it was really wow. So I was so excited. I can't tell you how thrilled I was. I uh, and yeah and but he so he told me he said I don't think you'll get what you're thinking you'll get. But anyway go to this particular market and I went over there. And the lady over there she's another one who made me think 100 times yeah she was yeah. really fantastic i said do you have anything with uh, less sodium because I, and she said for whom are you looking for yeah. and i said i'm looking for my son who's right. got a kidney problem and she said oh but that's no big deal yeah. that's no big deal because you're never going to get a snack which has got less sodium everything has a little bit but if you look at the thing at the back you'll realize how much and actually how little it is actually right right even the normal chips that you have or whatever you only think that it's got so much as you but he said she said all you need i mean it's a one teaspoon which you would probably need for the whole day anyway mm, correct how correct. much is he allowed and i remember saying something 0.5 mg or some crap like that do uh, i don't even remember what i said I and it, right? you know she opened my eyes and she said look if you have a sauce that you he's putting or he, uh, don't worry so much because mm. you're not having the whole bottle of sauce you're just having a little bit just right. like a dip or something so don't worry and don't restrict him so much he's right. restricting himself it's okay but mm. it's not such a big deal it's not so much you'll have to have the whole bottle of sauce to consume what you think is wrong for him okay right right so there there were a lot of things which were put in perspective when i went back to coachin and uh, yeah he's working out every moment every moment he's working out his own dietary plan because he right. knows what his problem is correct and correct. that makes it uh, makes a, a big difference between uh, satendra's child and, and my child because i think the age Ages. and also his social his social life is totally different from my social life right because right. as i said i have none Right. so he, his social life because of the corona actually has come down mm. Mm. not not because of the kidney uh, right. thing right. yeah right and uh, he's always making a joke about it and saying that you know i mean i should tell all my uh, lady friends now that they they have to pay more dowry because i've got three kidneys and you know where do you, get, <laughs> where do you find men with three kidneys yeah right. so that kind right. of thing <laughs> but uh, vasundra san being in la and you know so far away and you know traveling like this it's, it's something so different and everybody's story is unique correct correct is absolutely really unique and this is i mean a panel which i am so grateful to you for really for doing this because you know it makes you feel that okay you know you're not the only one exactly. uh, i felt that long time back as i said when i was in at the taj in london right. when he and he was working so hard in right. concierge yeah? he said don't don't even think twice about it and it's not just me there's another person as well in my yeah. family who's got it right. <laughs> yeah big right. easy yeah. to handle correct correct so there are a couple of comments i think uh, dr sundar says that even he is too scared to go for tests uh, usha so you're oh, not lovely. the only one <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> right great. and a few people say hi um, along the way um, 
but we can see that later. Um, I think a couple, I'm just conscious of time. If people have any questions, you can uh, feed them either on the kidney uh, chat, uh, on the kidney I don't know how page. the time has just flown. Actually. I know. <laughs> so I'm just very conscious of people's times. Um, just a couple of uh, things, um, you know, if you think back and see how did you learn to cope yourself, right? As in, what were your, to some extent, Usha, you talk of music as mm -hmm. the way um, of Out. coping, but, uh, mm -hmm. or as an outlet, etc. Um, are there any other things that worked for you? At an oh, lots of, lots of things, actually. Lots of things. I, uh, from 2015, mm -hmm. I started uh, using the sanitizer. I started using the mask long before COVID ever came. Mm. And uh, I've been using a mask. It's always in my bag. There were always mm. five or six because my musicians were always traveling with me. And I would try to convince them. The many people made fun of me in the airports and things saying, we well, look like the mask raider or whatever it is. But I mm. was, uh, so I learned to cope with that. I also learned to, uh, on my own, not telling Sunny about it or anything like that, but gave up a lot of things. But I, actually, I'm vegetarian, okay? Mm. So what more could I give up? Like he, at that time, I think he was worried about this this moon face thing coming, you mm. know? So you try to risk, I mean, you know, he went to the diet and things like that. So I tried to give up whatever little I could and, mm. you know, to, to follow a certain regime. Right. Okay. And... Uh, I also became more conscious of the fact that he was uh, more susceptible. Mm. Mm. Okay. So uh, in, almost like, uh, what shall I say? It was like a switch, especially when we came back to Calcutta from Cochin, it almost became like, uh, yeah, like putting on a switch and putting off. I just, uh, not that I'm a great, a great entertainer with my friends and things, but it's always been an open home. When Anjali comes, there are like 50 people in the house, all her friends. And Sunny has got another 50 people, all, all his own friends. Mm. But myself, I tried to stop even the few friends that I had coming right. up, yeah, to the house and uh, mm. to avoid infection or to avoid that. Okay. I remember, yeah, I remember my dentist once when I went to her, she said to me that she knows a person who's got the kidney thing and you know he can, unfortunately he can't come for the meeting that we've got we had some cultural meeting and this uh, doctor couldn't come because he he was not uh, feeling too well so you know if there's a little bit of a anything you know a small cold or a small cough or whatever everything gets magnified because of the kidney disease, right? So we all became, I became, I, I don't know about my husband, and I, but I became much, much more uh, aware of the fact that I should not be the reason to, you know, put him into any kind of a, a problem. So I learned to cope with that and I coped with it marvelously and I, I'm still coping with it. And, uh, you know, when he has his dialysis, I don't even get out of the room because he is so, he's so about it, about the fact that I might come outside and, you know, meet with the uh, technician. And, you know, he's wor very worried because probably because of my age, because of Corona and this and that and the other. But I am uh, very, very cooperative. I have not left home Ever since this started, of course, now I went out for my the vaccination and he also had his, he's very, very proactive. He wanted to do the vaccination. He, he believes in the fact that, you know, so it's nice. It's wonderful to have somebody who is not all the time wallowing in self-pity. And, you know, I think he, he went through those phases earlier on, but not now, not self-pity. I mean, but worried about pain and things like that. But it's not like that anymore. So I have coped and God is God is the greatest help, really. But also I have a very uh, positive way of thinking anyhow. And I don't allow things like this to get me down for too long. As I said, I go into the washroom and cry a hell of a lot. I can cry. yeah. But uh, I don't do it in front of him. I don't. I try anyway. But I'm sure he knows also. I can't hear you, love. 
Good. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm sure he he does know that. Um, Vasundra, in terms of you, your, you know, what were the, what has been the few things you've done to cope, apart from starting Kidney Warriors Foundation? So many uh, prayers and this and that, fasting, all that. Initially, then gradually, I gave up all that. Now I, I'm okay. Now I'm I've given up many of, but pray, of course, definitely. Mm. One can't stop praying. Yes. Amazing. You know, Vasundra, just looking at you makes me feel so good. <laughs> really. So much, all of you. All of you on the panel. It's just so lovely because, uh, you know, makes me feel uh, there is, I think there is a peace. Uh, there is a glow in the, uh, you know, the caregiver or, you know, it 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 shows. I'm I'm hundred percent sure because there are people who have told me that I, I I look much better than I ever looked before and you know that there is a certain glow. I think there is uh, when you accept or when I see uh, Satyendraji. I mean, I there is a there is a you know that acceptance, that peace that you get once you've accepted whatever it is, shows on your face. I mean, you know, and it's just such a beautiful. Uh, face that you can see. I can find it looking at uh, Satyendraji or uh, at uh, Vasundraji. You know, I can feel it within. I know that I can feel it when I'm singing. I know that I'm singing much better than I ever sang before. Really, really. And uh, I feel happy for that. God knows uh, that's his way of showing, I guess. But like she says, prayer. Really, I find myself praying all the time. And people think when I when before COVID, when I was still on the flight, people thought that, oh, she's all the time singing. But actually, you know what I was doing? I think, oh, Father, what in heaven, hallowed be thy name. I always <laughs> sing the prayer. So it's like people think that well, actually I'm saying the Our Father or maybe the doing all this nonsense getting onto the plane because I never want people to realize or think that, you know, why is she so gloomy? You know, you can't even in being, a, a, you know, a well-known person or a well-known face, even the slightest, uh, uh, what shall I say, non-smiling face of mine, people comment. Kya ho yeah. gaya aapko? Yeah. Aise lag and it's so irritating because you can't even cry in, you know, and be happy. <laughs> you know, right. I mean? you have right. to keep on smiling and smiling and smiling. Has become a way of life. Jahan par bhi jaiye, security mein log puchte hain. Aaj kya hua apko? Aise nahi hello bol rahe. F- five o'clock in the morning, you know, you're checking in, <laughs> and they expect you, and uh, yeah, they expect you to be smiling, and you got your bindi, and they're always all the security girls are always you, asking you, me. You have an image to live up to, obviously, yeah, all the time. <laughs> which luckily, uh, neither Satyendraji nor Vasundraji have to really no. uh, bother about. But without them bothering about it, they've got beautiful faces that beautiful uh, glow on their face yeah the, really right um yes uh, satyendra ji what do you do for sorry vasnara you're saying something i just wanted to thank usha ji for all the praises she's giving us you know we're just silently listening <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> satyendra ji um in terms of, you know, how are you as a family, you personally and as a family, how have you learned to cope? Yeah, I think very important. And uh, the first is that meditation is, yes, uh, we get more to that side. And uh, the, the second is, of course, spending more time with the uh, with, with the kids. So th- that is more important that I think before I was not spending that much time. Uh, I mm. was uh, getting on the work more and less with the family, but now I'm spending more time and uh, the consultation has gone much more now. Right. At the family side. So that is the key difference between earlier and now. And, uh, and I think the spending time is the, the best we can do uh, to you know heal them for, from the, all the pain and yeah. Right. Thank you. And that's so wonderful. 
इट्स रियली फैंटास्टिक लेकिन हम लोगों के लिए ये तो हुआ ही नहीं आई डोंट थिंक इट हैपन इवन विद वसुंधरा जी बिकॉज आर चिल्ड्रन वर ऑलरेडी ग्रोन एंड दे हैड देयर ओन लाइफ तो अब मैं अगर ज्यादा एक लाइन ज्यादा पूछती हूँ तो ही गेट्स इरिटेटेड विद मी इवन इफ आई वॉन्ट टू स्पेंड सम टाइम ही रिफ्यूज टू लेट मी बी देर फॉर द डायलिस फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल he never allows me to sit at the dialysis never mm-hmm. he'd rather have the maid who's in the house or the boy who looks after all the water uh, machinery and the dialysis unit and everything so right. but he doesn't want me there okay so jaise uh, aapne kaha ke you need to spend more time or you get a chance to spend more time or whatever wo to hua hi nahi hamare life mein ajeeb si baat hai agar mujhe karna bhi ho even if i'm dying to talk to him something or the other how was the match today or something you never say you know aake baith here my room mein or come and sit in my room and sit next to me nothing nothing i am just dying for that <laughs> just dying for him to say oh you know I right. remember one classic, uh, very classic classic uh, message he had sent sent to to me. I send messages in the morning to everybody in our group and everything. And so I used to re- regularly message Sunny, okay, when I w- when he was in Cochino. And once he said, "I wish that my girlfriends would message me the way my mother does." <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> that's as far as it went. Right. Where, uh, spending more time with him was <laughs> concerned. Right. Yeah. I think the age of the person matters quite a bit. Yes. So, um, uh, one final question. I think we really should wrap up. Uh, uh, one thing that you wish for, um, Satyendra Ji. I think uh, I wish for uh, that some alternative should come uh, for the kidney patients. You know that. the medical advancement so that the suffering is reduced and that is the only reason that i associated myself with the kidney warrior foundation i want to give back to society now because uh, it can it cannot be take and take we have to give back and and i i have already started it and in whatever means i can do it and uh, i'll i'll do uh, do more and more now for the society for the for the suffering people so that at least i can contribute from my part and from kidney right. body foundation so for the noble right. cause right yeah. okay. thank you um usha ji one final wish what i would like to do wish uh, i wish that the more people especially during uh, corona times and everything it has come out even a little bit more is the fact that everybody talks about every other disease all the time on television everywhere about heart and this and that and the other but there is not enough even though we have kidney warriors and i'm so so grateful to be part of them and there's a, a mohan foundation and there's mm-hmm. sunny then there's a, so many so many but nobody collectively is really talking about it on uh, on the media and i really wish i really pray uh i know that na- nothing can turn back as far as sunny's dialysis is concerned i just wish i have two wishes i just wish that uh, whatever he is doing i hope he has the same fantastic spirit of uh, being such a sportsman and being such an amazing amazingly spirited child that i keep praying god please what whatever it takes just keep him this way mm. you know let thy will be done okay but please keep him this way because uh, he is a rock and he is really my hero but my bigger wish is that for the larger people i mean larger betterment of the people i think uh, it has to really come out into the open you right. know people are they're just not aware Hmm. people are just not aware even of the basic words creatinine dialysis ckd this stage that stage nothing 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 there's heart there's uh, cancer there's uh, there used to be uh, dengue there's uh, everybody diabetes. seems to know about everything Di- sorry diabetes everybody knows about everything else but they don't know about this but also as anjali once said so beautifully that it's the only uh, the disease where you have an option mm. 
where there is an option, right. either the transplant or the dialysis, whatever. But my wish is that I hope that people and, and in the media and everywhere, people really start talking about this. Why only everywhere in every conversation you'll find in every channel that they're talking about what uh, that word itself is so morbid is comorbidity or whatever it means. Right. Why? That, that's my wish is for more okay. awareness for kidney disease and uh, make it less uh, less expensive in some mm. hope, some way or the other. Right. Because it's really, 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 really expensive. Right. And I know how everybody, when Asundra, as you said that, you know, it's so difficult. Imagine what the poor people are going through. Correct. Absolutely. Now, we're not talking about that. No. We're only talking about all sorts of other things. I mean, not not that those are. It's not a question, as I always says. You don't say you don't can't measure the mm. pain that somebody is going through. But, Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And uh, Vasundra, to you, uh, you know, the one thing you would wish for, one thing, all both of as Vasundra as well as Kidney Warriors. Uh, one thing that we have to do as Kidney Warriors Foundation is try to start dialogues with the government to get the insurance, to get some relief in medicine costs, you know, because just like what Usha ji just said, people can't afford this type of, you know, cost. And even for the transplant and the dialysis, sure. just have to work out the cost, make it more uh, uh, easy for the patients to, you can't change the disease, you can't dish it away. Right? Yes, that's it. You because just can't see that we can give facilities mm. so that you know patients at the end of the day we should feel that we have left something behind today we are still talking about we are doing this and that but we need to really uh, put something on the plate for patients to know that yes we are getting back something from kidney warriors foundation from the government of all the states and if we have a uh, united approach at the government level and uh, it is just uh, translated down and every correct takes that nothing like that right you need right. To and as you said you know vasundarji it's so true uh, this you, you, even when you, uh, you when you pray you can't say god i mean i talk my dialogue with god is like i'm talking to all of you i keep telling him every day Okay, for other things like, you know, I say, show us your miracle. Come on now, show me your yes. miracle. I want to see it, you know, show me. But I know that there is going to be no miracle as far as the dialysis is concerned, you know. Right. It's got to carry on the same way. And uh, so what I do pray for is the miracle of uh, his spirit, of a spirit of life and the awareness. Right. Somehow, maybe this is a good idea to do, do something with the government, but I don't know. Uh, how soon that could work out. But in any way, I mean, in any way, of course, everybody knows that I would do anything at all to, you know, to be a part of uh, getting the government and, and the people aware of this. But it is so expensive. So, hey, how are we going to do that? How? Right. How on earth? Right. Just have okay. to. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. And thank you for our audience. I think we've had audiences quite spellbound and listening uh, and you know, yes. not knowing what to ask and what to say. Uh, but I think there's a lot of good takeaways here, uh, you know, in terms of how people learn to cope, how uh, acceptance is an important part of the journey, uh, but also going forward, right? How do we gather uh, momentum around creating change, whether it's awareness in uh, and a, you know more conversations in the media to recognize and talk about the challenges, uh, to be able to communicate with policymakers uh, about the changes that need are needed, and obviously cost is a incredibly uh, significant com component of it, but there are other, you know, psychosocial, access to psychosocial care is another big one, right? So, so many families deal with uh, the psychological aftermath of this uh, disease as well. And it is a significant burden on the family. So I think it is important for, uh, you know, all the players to get together and uh, figure out ways to, uh, 
I guess, lobby the policymakers uh, to get the necessary changes done. So thank you once again for adding your voice to and, you know, expressing and sharing narratives, which, again, I think have hardly got spoken about. So uh, thank you, Ushaji. Thank you, thank Satyendra. You. And thank you so much, Vasundra. You don't want to do any questions? So. I, uh, let me check if there was... One question I'd... each we can do. Um, let me check if... I'm just checking whether there was... I think most people have kind of said... Hi, hello. Um, this discussion is so down to earth and inspiring. Um, I'm just checking. Is there anything in your kidney warriors? I'm just checking there. I think people have been uh, quite spell very good life experiences from the panelists. The family members and caregivers deserve utmost credit. Uh, KWF is doing a great job. Um, there's one person who has said, my son has been, Mahua has said, has been diagnosed with Alports today. He's nine years old. Please guide me. Um, so I guess, uh, uh, I don't know if you have anything specific to say on that, Vasundra, now, or you'll take that offline with. Yeah, maybe you should give her the address and, you know, she could do that. We can contact him and we have to see his reports and see, understand where he comes from. Right. Uh, right. Message with the Timorius Foundation page or even uh, patient engage, we can take it further. Yeah. So if you're still watching, uh, um, Mawa, you can uh, message on the page or uh, uh, yeah, either patients engage or kidney warriors and we'll address that. Um, uh, Dr. Arvind Kanchi says Usha Thabji made a point awareness of kidney disease among the general public is low, need to educate. So I think those were really, I think the questions are. Uh, not really questions. <laughs> They're okay. more comments. All I just happy. So, yes. Very yes. <laughs> thank so, you. I just want to say yeah, thank you. Ushaji's fan uh, when I was 17 years. <gasps> great difficulty. I would get that 100 rupees to go to Talk of the Town. Oh, <laughs> lovely. She's a South Indian lady wearing a sari. <laughs> I was wearing bell bottoms. So I would say that she's. Coming wow. <laughs> My family was very traditional, so, you know, I had to sort of, I was a little chief, uh, you know, the one smart one who would uh, play this, uh, these tricks. Where did you live in Bombay? I was living uh, in, uh, in um, uh, Malabar Hill. Oh, Shash snob. Hill. You were quite a snob, Malabar <laughs> Hill. <laughs> I was in the very underplayed, <laughs> down market by <laughs> because, uh, Actually, this, uh, South Indians are very traditional, you know, so the, you mm. cannot have that snobbery. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> you can't shut up. No. <laughs> yeah. No, so I, I had my conversation with, you know, in the pre-conversation with Ushaji, I said I have to express my fangirl moment and, you know, <laughs> so the, the whole, my husband actually came later on to me and said, why didn't you introduce me to us? Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should do this a little bit more often and have more panelists as well, you know. Right. It'll really help. I'm sure it would help. Right. And, um, I will, think. We will. I so think I come so. from Jodhpur, uh, it's a town in Rajasthan. Ji. And uh, I've grown up uh, on mm -hmm. all the occasions, you know, listening to you and we were. How late. lovely. From my childhood days, all my schooling days, I think we would have loved to see you on television and. How is superb. So great memories to... to and Ji, shukriya. Shukriya. It's a, it's a big day today for me and, and, and also the World Kidney Day. So, so I think... The, the, big, a big day for me also to meet up with you. Because it's so good that, you know, we're all from different parts of India and it's so lovely that you're uh, in Chandigarh and we've done so many shows in Chandigarh. Kya batai? Really wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank I'm glad you. I could bring a smile onto your face as Thank well. You. you always do. You always do. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you. <laughs> Thank right. you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Patience engage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.